you're metabolically broken. At this point in time, your sugar levels are still under control, but your doctor has made it clear. You're a hair and a freckle of being declared a type 2 diabetic, and you need to do something. Typically, the something your doctor has in mind is to lose some weight, preferably by going on a low-fat diet. Aish, you're already trying to do this. You're drinking skim milk. Yuck. You're removing the skin from your chicken pieces. You're eating muesli with no added sugar for breakfast and salad for lunch. And clearly, it's not working. Every visit, your health numbers hint you've slipped a little closer to the precipice. You're not alone. Maybe it's time to take a different approach. This is what a team of researchers from ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai decided to do. They signed up 138 metabolically compromised, not quite diabetic New Yorkers, and then did something radical. Instead of counting calories or prescribing a torturous exercise program, they sent 77 of them for cooking lessons. The remaining 61 continued eating as usual. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we see how changing how you cook, not what you cook, can make a difference to your health trajectory. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. The participants could eat what they liked, but those that went to cooking school had to watch how they prepared their meals. Frying, baking, and grilling were out. Boiling, poaching, stewing, and steaming was in. This dietary approach ends up lowering the level of ages consumed. Now, ages are advanced glycation end products. They're formed when sugars and amino acids spontaneously meet in a cooking pot. They're ugly and dangerous. Once participants had mastered the basics, they were sent on their way to eat and be merry for the next year. To keep the participants on the straight and narrow, A dietitian checked in with them on a regular basis. A year down the line, vital signs were checked and compared to their pre-diet status. So, did it make a difference? Well, at a quick glance, not really. On the plus side, they weren't fatter. There was some weight loss in both groups. And in the case of the low-age dieters, The effect was seen in more of the participants. But overall, the low-age dieters were less than 2 kilograms lighter, while the regular Joes were on average 500 grams lighter. So describing the low-age diet as a weight loss intervention would not be accurate. The other plus, advanced glycation end products were down. The age levels in blood and tissues were down in the low-age dieters and up in those not watching their ages. No big surprise here. Less ages in should translate to less ages circulating. What about sugar levels? Well, in terms of parameters looking at sugar control, there was also no real differences. HbA1c fasting blood glucose levels, blood glucose levels following an oral glucose tolerance test were largely unchanged. Based on these findings, it would be easy to conclude that the cooking intervention was a flop. But our team was thinking beyond glucose. They were thinking about insulin resistance. The body chemistry behind metabolic syndrome is insulin resistance. Insulin levels are high, morning, noon, and night. But despite the high levels, 
the response to insulin is tepid. The truckloads of insulin being pumped out by the stressed out overworked beta cells is not enough to overcome the resistance, which eventually leaves high levels of sugar circulating. It's at this point where the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes is made. And it was here that the low age diet shined. Remember, our people were slowly drifting towards the precipice when they embarked on the low age diet. Their body chemistry shifted in the right direction. They were less insulin resistant. Homer, a measure of insulin resistance, dropped in 80% of the participants and fasting insulin levels plummeted dropping on average by 33.4 picomoles per liter. This was in stark contrast to the regular Joes, which saw the average value of fasting insulin increase from 95.8 to 113.2 picomoles per liter. Oxidative stress and inflammatory markers were also down in the low-age dieters, hinting that a low age diet had actually shifted body chemistry in the right direction. The difference between the diets, 85 grams of grilled steak versus 85 grams of beef stew for dinner. This is so doable. You don't have to change what you eat or how much you eat or run a marathon before dinner. Just change how your food is cooked. By cooking like an Italian mama, slowly with a moderate moist heat, you end up creating better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library, enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who is drifting towards a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes? Share this video with them so they know how they can pull back from the brink without giving up their favorite foods. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.